David Laid has got it all. Looks, personality, status, and physique. But he gives off an aura of mystery, ambiguity, and intrigue. This could be due to his sporadic upload schedule, his increasing role with Gymshark, or his seemingly unattainable aesthetic physique. In this video, I will attempt to take a peek behind the curtain and illuminate the multifaceted mindset of David Laid, his motivations, passions, and regrets. They say, oh my God, I see the way you shine. Take your hand, my dear, and bless them both in mine. You know you stopped me dead while I was passing by. And now I beg to see you dance just one more time. Ooh, I see. With three and a half million followers on Instagram, and 1.6 million on YouTube, the most common assumption that would explain David's inconsistent upload schedule is that he is simply not passionate enough about creating content. But I don't think that's true. It's been clear since early on in his YouTube career that he has a deep interest in filmmaking and editing. I would kill, genuinely kill anyone I'm told to for this camera right here. To me, he values quality over quantity. His problem, however, is a lack of motivation. There's some quote out there about the journey being more rewarding than the reaching the destination itself. I think that applies here. The genesis and growth of David Laid's career was likely more thrilling and more fruitful than where he finds himself now, sitting at the top with millions of followers. This is common amongst YouTubers, film directors, and entirely different professions altogether. In order to regain some of that motivation, he often buys new cameras. So this is pretty much my camera collection when it comes to Canon versus Sony. But once the excitement wears off, so do the uploads. The rise of David's popularity came when he uploaded a body transformation video, accruing over 50 million views. From extremely skinny, to a top 1% physique in the world at the age of 17 left many people wanting to know how he did it, so they subscribed. And over the years, he made hundreds of videos, from lifting to eating. It's funny because I'm gonna eat all this, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and be lighter again. <laughs> To hanging out with his friends. Dylan ate a granola bar this morning. Oh, hey guy. No, I didn't eat a granola bar. So that puppy doesn't make you look any more innocent. Yeah, yeah, Tell the truth. Guys, guys. But over the past few years, things have seemed a little bit off. Let's look at his current issue from a historical perspective. The root cause of the stagnation of his career is like peeling back the layers of an onion. On the outer surface, it's his physique. But when you peel back a layer, you'll see his injuries. At the young age of 25, David's body is unfortunately in a fragile state, despite how incredible it looks. His back is not in good shape structurally. He's gone through years of rehab, seen doctors and specialists, but the possibly irreversible damage was created through years of heavy lifting through pain. David admittedly took upwards of 800 milligrams of Advil before certain workouts when he felt pain. He's much smarter now, but it may be too late. And in order to see how it got to this point, we need to peel back another layer. Now this is not a natty or not video. You can come to your own conclusion whether or not you think David has used performance enhancing drugs, but his natty status has been a topic covered by many people. It's probably because in some pictures he looks like this, and in some he looks like this. It's clear that he photoshops his pictures to embellish the sheer amount of size because he often looks significantly smaller in videos. However, with a pump, he does look freakishly big and lean in many videos. He's been confronted about it in person and denied ever using them. Natty or not? Natty or not? Are you still natural? Me? Yeah. You can drug test me if you like. Good, good answer. Good answer. No sarms or anything ever? No. Nope. No hormones? No. No. Scared. Uh, the professionals, aka the Greg Doucettes and the More Plays More Dates of the world, seem to think he did use PEDs at some point, probably around the age of 17, since he made huge jumps in PRs that year. It's overwhelming, the chances that it's not really true that he would be natural. 
The problem with him never admitting to his carry usage is that it gives many young guys out there false hope. David's genetics are in the top 0.1% in the world. He's 6 foot 2 inches with broad shoulders and an extremely small waist. These traits are simply not physically achievable for most people, even on steroids and reaching their peak. But at the end of the day, this is all passable because he still inspires tons of people to go to the gym and live a healthier life. And his genetics aren't exclusive to just his body. He's extremely good looking. And to see why he may have resorted to gear, let's peel back another layer. David is an ectomorph, meaning it's very difficult for him to put on size. Steroids were a fast track to achieve the muscle mass he desired to stand out and make a name for himself. But to understand why he felt this desire in the first place, the final layer. The origin of all of this is his genetic creativity. It started on YouTube at a young age, and from there his career path was sitting in front of him. With all that being said, David may not even view his career as being stagnant, but rather pivoted to a different direction, which is his new role at Gymshark. I'm a Gymshark creative director. That would be my new formal title. This new role allows him to flex his creative muscle and channel his filmmaking passions into a company he knows, trusts, and has been with for nearly a decade. This is a bit unfortunate for his viewers though, since it likely means even less content from his channel since he'll be busy channeling that creativity into Gymshark's content. From a financial perspective, David has never really needed to have a real job. He got his contract with Gymshark at the age of 18. I would assume his salary has increased over the years as he's one of Gymshark's most notable athletes or influencers out there. His new role, which is more sustainable in the long term, likely pays him even more. That, in addition to a successful pre-workout supplement, Euphoria, likely means that money is not an issue for him at this point in his life. Watching a David Laid video elicits a variety of emotions. Inspiration, laughter, fascination, friendship, and a motivated urge to get better. Whether it's his impressive vocabulary, his sense of humor, or his physique, most of his viewers want to be him. He represents the peak male form in many ways. But he's not even remotely braggadocious about it. Since he keeps his private life, well, private, we only get to see what he chooses to make public. So much about him is unknown and it leaves the viewers always wanting more. That's one of the reasons he's been so successful. He shares just enough content to stay active and relevant, but not enough for anyone to get burnt out by him. When he chooses to upload a video, viewers know it will be high quality and will get a short glimpse into his captivating and mysterious life. Gym culture has exploded over the past few years, particularly in young men. This is a positive movement and David is responsible for a significant portion of it. 99% of people will never know what it's like to have it all, but David Lay does. And I think I speak for all of his fans when I say, I hope he never loses his passion for creating videos. He may just need another spark.